now the topic is Plexus uh, Connect and the Instant JCam and as well Plexus Suite. In previous presentations, you have seen already pieces of code. In Alert's presentations, uh, you have seen the select statement. This is how the data can look like in the relational database. But it's not that good for chemists, right? So that's why we have Instant JCam and Plexus Connect to display the data as they would like. I often hear this question, what should we pick? What's, what's better, Instant JCam or Plexus Connect? It's, yeah, Har hard to answer because it depends on the use case. What, what do you need? Do you need a big toolbox or do you need a query and report tool? Do you need des desktop application or just web-based? But the biggest advantage is you can have both in the same environment. Because Instant JCam, it's really like a huge toolbox. You can do almost whatever you want with Instant JCam. You, you have seen IJC as electronic lab notebook. You have seen uh, IJC used uh, in a high throughput screening, IJC used in big pharma company. Many uses, and it's customizable. Please ask our consultancy team what can be done with IGC. But Plexus Connect, it's a different story. It's a query and reporting tool. And that's what it's good for. Uh, in last year, we did several updates for Plexus Connect, some good features like performance improvement. Everyone wanted to hear about performance improvement. We have heard how it went in GSK. People wanted to print things out, out of Plexus Connect. It's possible. And people wanted automatic update of changes done in IJC. They wanted to see it in Plexus Connect. We have it. But now the long run begins, because we need to go fully web-based. We need to improve the performance more. And we are listening to the users. We know what the trouble is for example, during querying, so we are improving the usability. Less clicks for you. And the focus is as well on integration with other parts of the Plexus suite. Because Plexus Connect is the query and reporting tool, but still it's just one single piece of the Plexus suite. <coughs> and there are many of them. And if they are combined, they should give the scientists what they need in one single place. And with this, I would like to pass the word to Roland. I hope you still like to see him. Most of you will have seen this, right? I think in English it's called a magic cube. Wendy, correct me if I'm wrong. More often we refer to the Rubik's cube. And the Rubik's Cube is something that you can think of as a solution. Now that might not be very intuitive because when most people see such a Rubik's Cube, they say, well, it's, it's a riddle itself and the actual solution to it is well, you make sure that all the colors are arranged appropriately on this Rubik's Cube. Did you actually know that the Rubik's Cube was invented in Hungary? Did you also know what the Rubik's Cube original intention was. It was meant as a teaching tool for, well, explaining geometric phenomenons and topology. It wasn't meant as a game, it wasn't meant as a riddle, that's just how it turned out later on. Um, do you know that it has, I, I'm not sure if I can even pronounce that number, I think it's a pentillion it has an enormous amount of different combinations that make up the individual sides of this cube if you just start to play with it. And as a matter of fact, you can think of it like, what is this cube actually made of? Well, you have a couple of corner pieces, a couple of edges, a couple of um, center pieces, and in the middle, there's something that binds these things all together. When we talk about what Camaxon provides Traditionally, it's something that can be referred as like toolkits, chemistry toolkits, data toolkits, some applications. And we've seen 
throughout these two days a number of examples like how these applications then actually get combined in order to enable people to follow through specific workflows that support the R&D projects. So we've heard this around compound registration that gets combined with D360, and there's also an inventory kind of sitting inside of this. So the question is, we need to create solutions that are simply more than just the sum of the parts. They need to work together. They need to be seamlessly integrated in order to offer the best of all of these individual tools. When Stephen was asking, where do we see the future? Then we see that we have to answer this kind of challenge of where people have a large amount of budget spent on the integration of things. Also, Joe from, the, from, from Accenture mentioned that there's an enormous budget spent in just trying to create an ecosystem where applications fit in. This is one of the particular strengths, though. We have toolkits that we know of how they are used in such integrated solutions. And I still believe that we are on the right path in order to provide, well, the individual mosaic stones into other people's applications and other people's solutions, as well as following our own path in order to provide well-integrated solutions of tools that provide ready workflows um, made up from Chemaxon tools. Um, let's talk a bit about user expectations once more. And that's quite an interesting thing. As I've said, this wasn't meant as a riddle. And for some people, you just give it in and say, what do you expect this to do for you? And they say, well, I, I don't like the color of it. I'd like to have it look differently. Um, some people might also say, that's a bit tiny. Maybe I'd like to scale that a little bit. Some people say, I might want to have a look inside and maybe actually do something completely different with it. Um, that's well possible. Um, let's talk about, well, you probably know it. You take this, you make a few turns and twists, and then you arrive at a state where it will take you a couple of months of study in order to revert it to its original state. Well, there is actually a robot that does that for you. It's called CubeStormer 3. It can solve a Rubik's Cube in about three seconds. It uses a cell phone with a camera for state identification. All the calculations are done on the smartphone, and then it just solves it. What, what I'm taking kind of away from this is that we, we have to, really, we have to work very, very closely with our users in order to identify what is the actual problem that we want to solve, and then work on implementing it in the right way. And that brings us back to where Carla actually left off, saying that now we have Instant Jenga, we have Plexus Connect, we have compound registration, we have the ability to kind of perform assay data management. And these three combined make up a solution, yet we still can answer the question, how is this going to be delivered to the customer? Well. We're going away from these kind of pure desktop-based applications where you run into version hell simply because they're all bound to different contexts and you have to make a certain effort in order to make sure all of the versions are in sync. That is something that you don't typically think of when you take your smartphone out of your pocket, right? There is an app store on the App Store, there are a couple of applications installed on your phone. These applications most often update themselves. So the delivery mechanism for these applications is completely different from having something installed on your local PC. And as soon as that happens, you are the one responsible for maintaining it forever. So we are bundling these things with Synergy, something that I have introduced last year at the UGM. And Wendy asked that critical question, like, isn't that a bit too ambitious for you guys? I said, well, I don't know, but let's figure it out. Well, the answer that I can give this year is that we're actually delivering applications using the Synergy platform to customers already. We are working, however, still on the integration of these tools in order to ensure that we have a seamless experience. Our vision remains the same. That we want to go from end to end from the ideation and design through to the data capture, the actual research data management standardization, and finally go through the cycle of analyzing what you've got and reporting on it 
rinse and repeat. And with this, I'd like to conclude and thank you for the last time for your attention. <laughs>